Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. This is where we pick out the questions that you've been commenting in the comment section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, all your bike and tech related questions. So without further ado, let's go straight into our first question. Yeah, let's get into it. So this one's been sent in by Christian Clausen. Thanks for getting in touch. The weather's getting warmer, that means more sweat. After about a half an hour run, the sweat starts to run into my eyes, leaving me almost blind. Is there any tricks on how to keep the sweat out of your eyes? Christian, glad you asked this one. Yeah. I believe myself an expert on sweat related. Oh, go on, you things. go first. Um, so, you want to check your helmet pads first, make sure they're new because they'll do a great job of absorbing all that sweat to stop it dripping down. Yeah. Um, but also, if it's really kind of leaving you blind, it might be because you're putting lots of sun cream on uh -huh. um, and that runs into your eyes from your sweat, which really stings and I would have the same problem when I go blind. You don't want to stop using sun cream though, especially if you're riding in such a warm climate. So what I used to do is use a zinc oxide stick, which is something that surfers use. Did get a bit of um, stick for it. Yeah. Uh, if you excuse the pun. But yeah, yeah. I put the oxide stick on my forehead. Is that so where I, it looks like that white smeary sort of cream all that stuff? Yeah, so I wouldn't put the sun cream above oh. my eyes and it would okay. leak down into my eyes. So the zinc oxide is um, actually really good and it's uh, it's uh, it wouldn't run. So that's why oh, okay. surfers use it, because you can go in the water, doesn't run at all, totally waterproof, stays on all day, you won't get sunburnt and it won't sting your eyes. Well, that's a better sure. answer than I was going to give. I'd have just said, look, to get some new helmet pads. Yeah. Okay, oxide. thanks a lot. Huh? Right, next question in is from Gaspar Fliesa, I think I've said that right. They say, hey GCN team, can I use brake fluid for, or can I use car braking fluid for my hydraulic disc brakes? Yeah, um, you can, provided that it's of the correct level and standard. So if you're using dot fluid, just make sure it's like dot four or dot five. But what you can't do is mix up different types of brake fluid. And seeing as cars don't use mineral oil, you won't be able to use it in a Shimano brakes. Simple answer is don't mix anything up and all of your brakes will have written on them what fluid they should use. There you go. There you go. Next one, been sent in by Christian Snyder. All the Christians are getting in touch yeah, today. Yeah, awesome. thanks for getting in touch. My chain whip was made for nine speed and doesn't really fit on current 11 or 12 speed cassettes. Can I update it by putting new bits of chain on or is there anything else different? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Just take, rem use your normal chain tool, remove the section of chain from your chain tool, which is like maybe like a seven or eight speed chain, and then just refit a section of chain from a modern chain that you need to use. Yeah, it should be Easy. Should no be reason why it shouldn't work. Yeah. Or if you don't want to do that or you don't think it does work, the easiest solution to that, which almost all chain rips will work, is just to fit it over the largest sprocket on the cassette. That yeah. way you haven't got to run into any complications with the spacing in the cassette. That's good. Yeah, I think mm. that's why they've yeah. done this Easy. Um, next question is from Eleven Ocean. They say, is it better to get a cycling computer in for summer for training and exploring purposes or invest in a smart trainer for the fitness improvements? They also say they live in a very flat part of London and the weather outdoors makes it less enjoyable. I'd be easier Zwifting for lunch or after work, that kind of thing. Hmm, interesting question, isn't yeah. it? I think if you're strapped for, you know, if you're, you're, yeah. you're trying to weigh up one or the other, personally, I would lean towards the trainer, I think. Would you? I think yeah. I'd lean towards the trainer because yeah. you're able to get out during the winter a lot more when it's dark after work, potentially. Um, you have a lot of fun, you know, on uh, Zwift and other training platforms too. Yeah, um, especially if you're in a busy city as well. Yeah, and I mean, a cycling computer's great for yeah. riding in the summer. There's a lot of great features you get from them, but it's not essential, you know, you can still, it's not essential. You, can still you can ride your bike without that. Yeah. Also, nearly everybody these days has got smartphones. So you could just get a handlebar mount for your phone and you've got a lot of the technology inbuilt to your phone yeah. that you could already use. And yeah, I think the smart sure. train is a wise choice. But the train would definitely keep you going on okay. the bike in the winter and bad weather. So yeah, for sure. Who have we got try. next? Next up, this has been sent in from Naraya. Interesting. Love that name. Yeah, One good of my user. favorites so far. Um, high tech presenter. This is for you then, yeah. I have a question. Is it correct that the Shimano XT disc rotor is better than the Durace rotor in terms of braking performance and heat dissipation? And from your opinion, is it better to upgrade from the 140 rotor to the 160 mil? Oh, a two-part question. That's a two-part, a double whammy. Okay, so in terms of all and out, all out and out braking performance, I'm not aware of any significant difference between an XT rotor and a Dura-Ace rotor. I certainly haven't seen any tests to conduct if there's any difference between them, and I haven't tried it myself. However, what I would say is that I feel the braking performance would be comparable. It's from the same brand, so they use a similar technology in the brake rotors. Um, but what I would consider taking into account is XT, is a mountain bike group set, and is their second tier down, with XTR being the top one. Whereas Dura Ace is the road group set and that's the top tier component. Okay. So 
if you take that sort of approach in how Shimano have tiered the group sets, in theory, Drew Ace would be better. But I haven't seen any testing to prove that. Well, there you go. And in terms of the rotor size. Rotor size. Well, I'm a big guy, so I go for the biggest rotor possible. Yeah, I did a little experiment on this out on the road, switching between 140 and 160 rotors. And it turns out, using the slightly larger rotor, in my simple experiment, meant I could stop from 40 kilometers an hour in the region about one meter sooner. So oh, that's wow. quite a significant difference there. Yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? Okay. okay. So I'd probably suggest going for 160 rotors if you want best brake in performance. However, I still do run a 140 on the front and the rear because I don't go down any long descents and I think the bike looks a bit cooler. There Simple. you go. Okay. okay, next question from Dionisio Bacoy. Okay, yeah. Um, Hi, team. Can I convert my carbon road bike from exposed cables but internal to fully internal inside headset spaces Whoa. and handlebar. No, please don't try and do that. Um, there's no need to try and incorporate all the cables and hoses into the frame handlebars, forks, when it's not designed for that. To do that, you're gonna have to start drilling holes into stuff. Seems very dangerous to me. Plus, I mean, internal cables, as cool as they look, they're a bit of a pain to sort of service and fix your bike, aren't they? Yeah, hmm. they are a bit of a pain. Um, so do us all a favor, stay safe, don't drill holes in your bike. Next question is from Wyo. So they say, hey guys, I've got a foot length discrepancy. Should I set my saddle height via the heel on the pedal method based on the shorter or the longer leg? And they're assuming that the wedges are out of question. Oh, they also gave us a little tip on how to pronounce their name. Yeah, That's very kind of them. Yeah, very kind of you. Hmm. Um, I'd say this would be for the bike fit experts. Yeah, they should I have think. sent this in a few weeks back when when we had Jake from Precise Performance on. Yeah, I, I mean, a good uh, question for him. I'm not I'm not sure why wedges would be out of the question though. No. On your cleats, I think that's if you have do if you do have a discrepancy between legs, yeah. wedges are probably quite a good bet to. I think the, the best things up. the best advice we give right now is certainly to seek the advice from a bike fitting expert. Mm -hmm. However, if you're trying to get your saddle rough in the right position, I think it's always safest to err on the side of caution and it's better to have it slightly lower than what it would be to run the risk of having it too high. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So that's yeah. probably the best advice for now. Okay. Okay, last question for this week is... Glen Finch. Yeah, go oh, on. My voice went a bit higher then. Glen Finch. <laughs> you go for it. I have a uh, Cervelo a Series R with Ultegra Mechanical Group Set. I want to go electric. Would SRAM Wireless be a good upgrade, or is it best to get a conversion to DI2? Well, the easiest solution, SRAM. You haven't got to choose um, route any cables through the bike would make life a lot easier. But Go on. he's already on Shimano Ultegra, so it would perhaps be cheaper just to, you know, upgrade. Um, well, there is that option. Yeah, you wouldn't have to replace some of the components, say the crank, some of the other bits and pieces. But the easiest option in my mind, irrespective of cost, is not having to route the cables through the frame for the DI2. Because I did that on my recent mountain bike to gravel bike upgrade series. It's quite tricky to get those DI2 cables looking clean and tidy. Yeah, mm. for sure. Okay, okay, well, there you go. Right, that was our last question for this week's Tech Clear. Hope we answer all your questions. If we haven't got to yours, once again, I always apologise. But if just be persistent. Keep commenting them underneath. We'll yeah. pick them up eventually. And, um, well, same time next week, shall we? Yeah, see you next week. I have a tech presenter towards myself now, so I'm going to be uh, yeah. passing them off camera. <laughs> right, see you later. <laughs>